What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Real Packers Talk, the podcast dedicated to everything green and gold. I am your host, Ethan Peltier, and today I wanted to share my week two preview. Uh, It's going to be Bears at Packers on Sunday Night Football, marking the 17th season in a row that the Bears and the Packers are playing during primetime, which will be interesting to watch. This is the oldest rivalry in the NFL, and regardless of how good the teams are, respectively, it's always a good matchup to watch. So, without wasting any time, I'm just going to hop right into it. I'm going to briefly touch on the Packers' week one loss against the Vikings. It wasn't pretty. It was really hard to watch. So, I'm just going to leave it at that. The Bears, on the other hand, are coming off a pretty big win against the San Francisco 49ers. They ended up winning 10-19 to in what was a pretty slippery affair. The rain was coming down. The, the entire field was essentially a, like a one big slip and slide. If you go back and watch the highlights from the game... You'll see players slipping, falling over, which makes it really hard, like I said, to gauge and break down and analyze what happened in this game. I don't want to call it a flute game. However, if you ask me if the conditions are better, if it's not raining, if the field is not a one giant slippery slide, I do think that the 49ers are going to win that game. But that's not what happened. The Bears are sitting at 1-0, and and the Packers are sitting at 0-1. And it is for that reason that I believe that this game is that much more important for the Packers. You really do not want to fall behind 0-2, especially to a divisional opponent. If the Packers are going to win the North this year, they're going to have to beat the NFC North opponents. So, ideally, they have a big win tomorrow night. Before I talk about the game itself, I want to talk about the injury report. According to Packers writer Wes Hodkowitz, he reported that four Packers were listed as questionable uh, this Friday, being Elton Jenkins, David Bakhtiari, John Runyon, and Alan Lazard. Of those names, I expect maybe to see Alan Lazard and maybe Elton Jenkins, but the other two I guess are unlikely. But that's just uh, my opinion as a fan. I have obviously no idea what's going on inside of these buildings who knows how close David Bakhtiari or Elm Jenkins are to coming back but again I last week I was under the impression that they might be on their way back in soon maybe not as soon as I thought but hopefully we can get Bakhtiari back within the next couple weeks or so I have heard that he's been practicing a little bit more doing team activities that kind of stuff so that is good news On top of the beatdown that the Packers got last week, there were also a number of injuries. So staying healthy is going to be really important for this team moving forward as well. And for the Bears, they're actually not dealing with that many injuries either. They have one player who is listed as doubtful, uh, and then the other two are questionable, I believe. Now I am hoping that last game kind of lit a fire into these guys and woke them up. Get them ready for the season. I see a lot of Packers fans, and really just NFL fans in general, joking around on the internet that the first week of the season is essentially like the last week of the preseason for the Packers. And honestly, at this point, it seems pretty accurate to me. So, now I'm going to hop into my offensive key to the game and my defensive key to the game. Starting with offense, same thing as last week. I think that the Packers did not rush the ball nearly enough. You've got Aaron Jones, you've got A.J. Dillon. One of, if not, like, the best running back tandem in the league. Why not use them? Aaron Jones only had eight touches last week. That is simply not enough. Why do you pay him that much if you're only going to give him eight touches? Now, Matt LaFleur has said in some interviews that he intends to lean into these guys more. And looking back on the week one performance from last week, yes, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon need to get the ball more. It was pretty obvious that when the offense was running through them, we were actually moving the ball. I believe that leaning into them is going to open up the rest of, like, the passing, play action, all of that. And, you know, kind of as a side note to go with that, as much as I want the Packers to run the ball, whenever they do pass, Rodgers, you got to trust your young receivers. I know that Christian Watson had that huge drop and the very first drop, very first play from the Packers. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of seemed like after that, Rodgers was hesitant to even look Watson's way, regardless of how open he was. So, ideally, 
the quarterback and the receivers build a little bit more of a rapport with each other. However, I truly, like I said earlier, I truly don't believe that that's going to happen unless you lean into the running game. For the defense, I just simply, it is get after the quarterback. There were so many instances in last game where Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, a defensive lineman, were inches away from getting a sack, and then Kirk Cousins is able to escape and throw a dot down the field to uh, Justin Jefferson. Justin Fields is a young quarterback who has a decent pair of legs on him. He can run, that is for sure. But if you can get to him, if you can get pressure, you can shut him down from the very get-go. I expect defense to be swarming, buzzing. I really hope that they're not playing eight yards off the line of scrimmage as far as like the secondary goes. I saw way too much uh, soft coverage. And honestly, this defense is not going to thrive if it's not aggressive. There was a tweet that came out this week. Uh, it was a quote from Jair Alexander saying that he wants a shutout. I'd love a shutout. I think that'd be the perfect way to respond to what happened last week. For all this talk about how good the defense is going to be, why don't you show us? Why don't you go out there and shut someone down? So hopefully, that's I'm going to be looking for that. I really think that the defense is going to have a better game tomorrow night uh, compared to last week. If Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith can have a good game, I expect the rest of the defense to have a good game. Get in Fields' face. Get pressure. He will make mistakes. He will make. He will force turnovers, and y- you know you will get him out of rhythm. That is really important. Last week, Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson were in rhythm basically the entire game. You need to shut that down. You cannot. You need to absolutely have to disrupt rhythm, or they will run all over you, which is what happened last week. So that wraps up my keys to the game for both offense and defense. For special teams, pretty much every week, I feel like I should state this uh, at some point, I haven't made any keys to the game for special teams yet because I've yet to see like a huge special teams blunder. Really, the key for special teams each week is just do your job. Just play well. Uh, you know, no sloppy mistakes on kick returns or any of that stuff. I want to now hop into some predictions. Uh, and this first prediction, Packers fans might not like, but if I'm being completely honest, not to be a negative Nancy or anything, but I kind of expect this offense to start slow again. They are in search of an identity, as far as I'm concerned right now. It's clear that Rodgers does not trust his receivers, and they and the receivers themselves don't have enough experience to gain their quarterback's trust. But it's still an issue. It needs to be fixed. I really hope that we lean into the running game more. I think that that needs to be the identity of this team as as far as right now is concerned. Until that rapport is built and that chemistry develops, run the ball. Why not? You've got two really good running backs and a pretty solid offensive line as far as depth goes, assuming we get some of these guys healthy again. Yeah, for whatever reason, we also seem to struggle against the Bears. Uh, We're a slow starting team. So I expect us to not start off hot. I'd love us to. I'd love us to come out and score a touchdown on each of the first like three possessions, go up 20 to nothing right away. But I don't expect that to happen. My other prediction uh, for defense is that they're going to have a multi-sack, multi-turnover game. I expect them to be all over fields. I would love a shutout. I know Jair would love a shutout. Let's get a shutout. That'd be cool, right? Um, but I actually don't have a shutout predicted in my final score. My final score prediction for this week is going to be 10 to 17 Packers. I am going to pick the Packers to win again. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm not wrong this time. But yeah, that wraps up pretty much everything I wanted to touch on for this week to preview. I didn't have that much to talk about. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to quickly hop on and share these thoughts before the game tomorrow but with that i do appreciate you for checking out my podcast it means a ton to me please feel free to subscribe like and share the podcast you can find me anywhere on spotify anchor soundcloud and youtube i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening and with that i'm gonna leave y'all with a go pack go peace